Sammy Roto is a tool for masking characters or objects in video clips. This tutorial will show you how to install and run it on Windows. First, download it from the Sammy Roto GitHub page by going to Releases, and then selecting the latest version for Windows. Once the file is downloaded, extract the contents of the zip file, and then double-click on the install dependencies.bat file. If Windows warns you that it is an unrecognized application, just choose to run anyway. A menu will appear and wait for you to make a selection. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, then select Option 1. This will enable hardware acceleration on compatible hardware, allowing the program to run much faster. If you know that you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, then you can choose Option 2 in order to reduce the amount of files that will need to be downloaded. If you are unsure, just choose Option 1. The installer will proceed to download the dependencies and models that are required for the application to run. Everything will be installed within the SAMI Roto folder and will not affect anything else on your system. If you decide to remove the application, you can simply delete this folder. Once the installation has finished, you can launch the application by double-clicking on runsami.bat. A terminal window will open and then a browser window will open to display the interface. Note that if you close the terminal window, this will stop the application. On some Windows 11 systems, there may be a delay of 1 to 2 minutes at launch while it scans the application files. At the top of the interface, you will find three tabs to load different pages. Segmentation, Matting and Export. On the left side of the interface is a collapsible sidebar, which allows you to load a video file and also contains some application settings. Each page of the interface includes an instructions area which includes basic instructions for using that page. We will start out by loading a video clip. Sammy Roto includes some sample video clips inside the examples folder. Please note that you are expected to trim your video clip down to only the necessary area prior to loading it into the application. Once the clip has loaded, you can drag the seek bar to view different frames of the video. Simply click anywhere on a video frame to select an object in the scene. Sometimes you may need to place multiple points to get a good selection. If you want to select multiple different objects in the video, you can change the object ID. It is generally the best practice to use different object IDs for each object that you want to select. Each object will show up in a different color to help you tell them apart. Next to the object ID, you will also find a point type selection. You can add negative points to indicate areas that are not part of the object that you are trying to select. Once you have selected your objects, click on the Track Objects button to propagate the masks across the entire video. This part can be slow, especially if you have selected multiple objects. If you see that it loses track of the object, you can cancel the tracking and go back to add points on additional frames. Towards the bottom of the segmentation page, you will find some post-processing options. You can disable outlines to get a better look at the mask edges. The outlines are solely for the preview and do not appear in the exported video. You can grow or shrink the size of the mask. You may find that you need to set this to one or two in order for the mask to extend all the way to the edge of the object. If you see small holes or dots in the output, you can also adjust these sliders to remove them. Finally, there is a point list at the bottom which keeps track of every point you have added to the video. Selecting one will seek to that frame of the video. Once you are satisfied with your selections, you can go to the export page to render it out to a file. There are a few settings here which will affect your output. For export type, you can choose between matte, alpha, and green screen. The alpha setting will place your selected objects against a transparent background and save it as a ProRes file. 
This is typically the recommended setting. The green screen option will place the objects on a solid green background and save it as an MP4 file. The matte option will create a matte video where your objects are solid white and the background is solid black and save it as an MP4 file. This setting can be useful for some compositing applications. For the export content setting, you can choose between the standard segmentation mask, a version of the segmentation mask with smoothed edges, or the matting result. We will come back to matting in just a moment. Just click on Export Video to render out the video with your selected settings, and then you can click the Download button to save the file. Now, let's look at some of the settings in the sidebar. You can choose between multiple segmentation models with different levels of quality and speed. The actual speed will depend on your hardware configuration, but I would recommend using the slowest one that you are comfortable with. Note that when you change this setting, you will need to restart the application for the change to take effect. To close the application, be sure to close both the browser tab as well as the terminal window. There is also a setting for the internal processing size for the matting operation. This only affects the output on the matting page, but lowering this value will increase the speed and reduce memory consumption of the matting at a slight reduction to quality. You can also save and load points for your current segmentation. This may be useful if you have selected a number of points across multiple frames and may wish to make changes later on. Now, we'll load a different video clip to try out the matting page. Segmentation simply cuts out an object, but matting tries to resolve soft or transparent parts of the object, such as hair or fur. Before we head to the matting page, we first need to mask an object on at least one frame in the segmentation page. If you are tracking multiple objects, then all of your objects need to have masks visible on this frame. Then, simply go to the matting page. Make sure it's displaying a frame where you have a segmentation mask showing. Press the Run Matting button, then wait while it processes all of the frames and objects. At the bottom of this page are some post-processing settings to grow or shrink the mask, or to adjust the gamma to tweak which areas are included or excluded. To export your matting result, just go to the export page and ensure that export content is set to matting. Hopefully, that should be enough to get you started. If you want to download Sami Roto, just go to the address shown here.